Tonight on Business Live, Development Bank Ghana begins official operations tomorrow as a vehicle to de-risk funding to small and medium-skilled enterprises. Humbled by the support we have received so far and indeed continue to receive from these institutions and the government of Ghana, a commitment to make an impact by doing it differently and doing it properly. We have more as new bank receives $700 million from partners. Also, the Deputy Finance Minister gives indication that government may resort to an IMF program if homegrown policies fail. If, it's necessary, if, if our programs fail us and we are not able to uh, get the confidence and the resource and the fiscal space discipline which we have to impose upon ourselves, we do it. then you don't have a choice. Mm. Ahead, we'll engage a former finance minister who has long held the view that the country returns to the IMF for a bailout. Plus, consumer spending on dairy products expected to become the fastest growing in the food and non-alcoholic beverage category of inflation. More as 329 billion CDs is to be realised from household spending this year alone. All these stories and more come in shortly. We begin with commodities. I'm Charles Aite. Tonight's the much-awaited Development Bank Ghana is expected to begin full-scale operations from tomorrow the 14th of June. That's after a short official launch ceremony today. The new bank will play the role of reducing the high risk of lending to small and medium enterprises in Ghana. Speaking to some selected journalists at a pre-launch brief, the chief executive of the bank, Kwame Duka, assured the bank won't shift focus from its core mandate. Development Bank of Ghana is a development finance institution unlike a universal bank with the purpose of partnering with the commercial banks to provide support for key sectors of the economy. Addressing some selected journalists ahead of the launch, Chief Executive Kwamina Juka hinted that the bank received funds in excess of 700 million US dollars from its shareholders and ready to drive the growth of small and medium enterprises in a country. The result DBG today has a capital structure of nearly $800 million. To date, this funding has given us funds in excess of $700 million for on lending through our PFIs to our SMEs. And in terms of our equity structure, we have about $200 and $250 million roughly about 1.2 billion, billion CDs in capital. We are humbled by the support we have received so far and indeed continue to receive from these institutions and the government of Ghana. A commitment to make an impact by doing it differently and doing it properly. The bank is not only interested in providing funds for the SME sector, but supporting commercial banks with capacity building to be able to understand the mandate. Here's Deputy Chief Executive Michael Mensa-Ba. However, it's important to realize that our risk is to the commercial bank, and what we'll be doing is to um, support the commercial bank from a capacity building perspective. One of the other things that we've realized is that the SMEs themselves require support. So the other side of the story is how do we ensure that the SMEs themselves are using the money for the purpose for which it was given to them, and also ensuring that they are able to pay back. And in that respect, what we'll be doing is providing capacity building for the SMEs as well. There are four local banks that have already formed partnerships with the Development Bank to support government initiatives. You're still watching Business Live. Well, the a Deputy Finance Minister John Kuma has expressed optimism that if homegrown policies in government fail to address current economic challenges, Ghana will have no option than to revisit an IMF program. It has come amid several back and forth arguments between government and the opposition over whether or not it is time to revisit an IMF program considering the economic constraints that the country is currently you know, experiencing. But take a listen to Dr. John Kumar's response in an interaction with George Riafi. It's one, two clear that air, that Ghana is against the fund. We haven't said yeah. that. We just believe that we should try what we believe should work. Mm. And if it doesn't, it doesn't work, work, 
we, we have always we have always worked with the IMF, mm. <laughs> and even the last time when they were giving SDRs, Ghana got one billion dollars yeah. from the fund, mm. and and so we are not enemies. We continue to work with them. If it's necessary, you would do it when your programs doesn't work. Yes, if if it's necessary, if if our programs fail us and we are not able to uh, get the confidence and the resource and the fiscal space discipline which we have to impose upon ourselves. We do it. Then you don't have a choice. Mm. Away from that, the Managing Director of Ecobank Ghana, Daniel Saki, has expressed optimism that measures outlined by the Bank of Ghana to stabilize inflation will soon help reduce prices of goods and services. According to him, local banks are ready to support the numerous government initiatives aimed at creating jobs. Speaking at the bank's annual general meeting of the, of the bank, actually, Saki was upbeat that the inflation rate will soon respond to monetary measures. We are aware of the measures being implemented by government to deal with the inflationary, the increasing inflationary pressures and are supportive of these measures. We are aware of the adverse impact of these on the macroeconomic environment and the headwinds that they pose. While we are optimistic of a recovery in the medium to long term, in the near term, we are committed to working with our clients to support them to navigate this period. We will continue to work to deepen our relationship with our customers and provide them the needed support to grow their businesses. Our performance for the first quarter of the year 2022 has been encouraging and we expect the growth trend to remain positive but are mindful of the headwinds due to the current inflationary pressures and supply chain disruptions. Finally, let me add that we are committed to delivering value to all our stakeholders. Let's now get back to our earlier story regarding Ghana likely to return to an IMF program. That is submission by the Deputy Finance Minister, Dr. John Kuma. We're joined via Zoom to respond by a former finance minister, Seth Tekpe, on the finance ministry's consideration of an IMF bailout if homegrown solutions fail. Of course, we're grateful that you could join us. And we want to start off with, you know, Dr. John Kuma's thoughts on the, I mean, your thoughts actually on the development bank official opening tomorrow. I mean, what, I mean, what do you feel the premise of this development bank is? Is it justified and what are your expectations? Well, thank you very much. Um, an investment bank, you know, um, or development bank is always, you know, justified in an economy because our lending cannot remain short term. That's one reason. Um, these banks lend, you know, long term, uh, medium to long term, which means that the tenor for loans are likely to be longer. And if managed well, you know, it means uh, at lower interest rates. And those are the uh, sort of banks we hear about CDB, we hear about, you know, other development banks, including Exim Bank. Exim Bank is actually on the trade side, but it's also regarded as a development bank. You know, so um, I think it's important that we have such a development. But let me say that it is not without precedence. We mm. had a development bank, which was investment bank, you know, back in the 1960s. And it was our desire after the case was won, you know, for the investment bank to come back into its own. You remember it was involved in a case. Now, another initiative, if you recall, from the Mahama era is the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Bank, which is another leverage, you know, for development. So we are getting the right instruments, you know, for long-term development for market, hopefully. They will be involved in viable projects as we have for the Ghana Invest Infrastructure Investment Fund. So um, it is a duplication. We now have an investment bank. We are not sure that its mandate has changed. We have the Infrastructure Investment Fund, Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund, you know, which is also more on the public side, but could also, you know, help. And then to the extent that the ESIM Bank, if it is outward looking as was planned, it's supposed to also assist, you know, businesses, you know, with their um, capital aspects, infrastructure aspects, equipment and the rest, which are not, you know, finance with tenors of three years, you know, to five years, then maybe 10 years. Then like China, Azim, Turkey, Azim, and the rest, we know them, they give us the big loans. 
you know, that we are on. So this, this, this development-oriented banks, including some which have existed on the commercial bank side, Ecobank Capital and mm. the rest, you know, should be able to place the economy, you know, in the medium term, you know, medium to long term on the right footing. I think we are reliving in Kuma's dream, you know, the foresight that he had, and I would hope that we would find a way to consolidate all these efforts, you know, um, if not by measure, you know, through collaboration, you know, so that the nation can benefit from the initiative. Now, the IMF, uh, Mr. Sekwe, you have been all out calling for Ghana to return to an IMF program to deal with recent macroeconomic, you know, exigencies. Recently, we've had the Deputy Finance Minister, John Kuma, <coughs> you know, speak to my colleague, George Rafi, about an intent by government to revisit the IMF program on the condition that homegrown programs fail. From your perspective, what about these homegrown policies do you think are not working, first of all? Well, the point is that where is the homegrown package? You may have seen it, then one may exist internally, but as far as I'm concerned, we have not seen any homegrown package from the government. Remember, we used I'm afraid we have lost uh, Tekwa there, yes, connection. All right, I well. think he's back. We lost, yeah, you. Yes, we lost you somewhere, but of course, please continue your submission. Yes, so my, my point is, if the government said there is a homegrown policy that exists, I have not seen it. I don't know if you have seen it, and I don't know if any member of the public has seen it. If by, you know, a, a, a medium-term package, it is what is in the budget, then remember that the ratings agencies, you know, the markets will not be able to go back to the market. I've already passed their verdicts, you know, on that. So I would only say that if there is a medium term, you know, homegrown austerity, considering that when you are doing austerity, you have a minimum of three years, which is, you know, the normal thing, then we are yet to see. Maybe going into the mid-year review, we will see the package. But once you see the package, it's only when you see a package that you can debate its elements. You know, you want to know, um, of course, it begins with austerity, expenditure control, which we have been saying, you know, um, you know, additional revenue measures. You know, so far we have about 11 levies. If you can go to the appendix, you will see they have not helped. We have done things which is hurting industry. You know, the revenue side, they're blocking VAT input tax credit is not bringing, you know, much revenue. Uh, the e levy, you know, I have expressed doubts. One, it is already in the budget, you know, a seven billion to be added every, one billion every year. It's in the medium term, you can check. So it's not new revenue. So we know these, these measures already, and they have no help us to go to the market. And remember, we were to go to the markets for financing the deficit, you know, to the tune of five billion last year. We got three billion. We could not go for the two billion as we speak. You know, the deficit is 43 billion. I say 43 billion because I still, you know, believe that there was an arithmetical error, if you can call it an error, mm -hmm. where the 5 billion bailout was subtracted from 37 instead of adding. So the deficit is 37. And if you consider that, you know, um, if you consider that uh, arrears are only 1.9, you know, billion in the budget, we all know that arrears five is that we are told energy sector you know, levy, sorry, energy sector arrears and loan is about 12 billion, 10 to 12 billion US dollars, not cities. Then we are talking about a deficit which is probably around 15%. Our debt has crossed 80%. The only reason it is below 80 is because of that we don't add bailout and also Great. we are at the beginning of the year. So, uh, in sum, I'm saying that I have gone through some of the, the difficulties facing the economy. I've gone through some of the policy measures, and I'm saying that, you know, we do not have a policy which we can discuss, which we can debate, you know, to see whether it's viable. So maybe they've shared something with the fund. You know, maybe they know something which we do not know. Uh, but the IMF has always been an option for developing countries, you know. And uh, let me say that, we did not actually win ourselves off the IMF. We went to the IMF for the COVID loan of one billion. We were among the first to rush, you know, for it. We went to the IMF. We collected the SDR one billion, 
you know, two billion, up to about six billion US dollars has flowed on account of COVID, including Bank of Ghana. It has not provided a relief. So if all these were to provide a relief, and please let us let us quantify the six billion. If you multiply it even by six, you know, you're talking about 30 billion, which is about half of what DRA brings it. If all this injection between 2020 and 2021 did not help us get out, you know, the situation, considering that the ECF, you know, which we did was for slightly below 1 billion. And here we are talking about 6 billion, mm -hmm. you know, which has not helped. Then there is something systematically wrong. And when you are at that point and you can't go to the market, your ratings are going down and the rest, everybody runs away, you know, from you and your last resort for policy credibility, which, by the way, is not just the NDC that used it, but if you go to Bank of Ghana, the governor used, you know, that expression. Then I think that inflation is not kind to us. The external situation is not kind to us. So, yes, it is a, a viable option. I stopped talking about it because government has said categorically that they are not going. And so then at that point, I kept saying, then give us the alternative. And now we are told the alternative does not seem to be working. You know, so um, I think, you know, my final point on this is that, you know, if we are going to go, we might as well buy the bullet. You know, why? Because the situation will continue deteriorating. You know, and if we are not able to get, you know, the money we need or the domestic, you know, uh, bond market, we know it that we are auctioning failures government is never able to raise domestic and uh, the only glimmer of hope is the news that some banks may give us one billion we are yet to go to parliament mm. remember the deficit of 43 billion if you divide it even by by eight is five billion if you divide by 76.1 billion so even the glimmer of hope of one billion is just about one fifth or one sixth so basically Yes. Yeah, so basically, even though government opts for, is opting for an IMF program, it, per your statement and per the analysis that several economists have made, it cannot solve the entire macroeconomic challenges that we currently face in, as a nation. We're grateful, Sir Tekwe, for and having, we've run, you, and sorry, for having we've analysis on this. Yeah. Yes. We're running out of options. So um, we have no choice. Yes, all the things that have been thrown. Well, it seems that way, and so we just wait for the mid-year review, you know, to see whether we go to a fund, you know, to the fund, or whether we would have a credible homegrown policy to debate. We're grateful that you could join us, Mr. Setek, but he's a former finance minister, helping us appreciate developments regarding government soon returning to an IMF program if homegrown policies fail. That's a condition. Well, you're still watching Business Live. Still to come, consumer spending on dairy products expected to become the fastest growing in the food and non-alcoholic beverage category of inflation. More as 329 billion CDs is to be realized from household spending this year.
And those were headlines making, of course, the papers around the world in our international uh, summaries. But back home, consumer spending on dairy products is expected to become the fastest growing in the food and non-alcoholic beverage category this year. This will be followed by bread, rice and cereals. According to Fitch Solutions, total household spending in Ghana for this year is estimated at a little above 329 billion cities. Charles Ntinyabua has more. Down dairy products such as milk will grow at an annual average of 20%. It, however, accounts for only 3.7% of total food spending. Faith Solutions said Ghanaians spend predominantly on fish and fish products as well as bread, rice and cereals, which collectively account for around 70% of total food spending. But the growing expenditure in dairy products will not change over the medium term. It attributes the trend to both westernization and greater formalization of the Ghanaian food sector. Meanwhile, total household spending for this year is estimated at a little above 329 billion cities and will grow by an annual average of 13.4% over the next five years. This will bring total household spending to 617.5 billion cities, approximately $69.2 billion by 2026. And of course, that'll be it for Business Live. We have more news on myjawonline.com. I'm Charles Aite. Many thanks, many thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of our programs.